Dark Moon Races is the new mini expansion for Hearthstone that'll be coming out on the 21st of January. It was just revealed like literally like an hour ago for the 35 brand new cards that we'll be getting, including four new legendaries. So how do we actually use these cards and what cards are going to be good? Today, we'll be going over the top five brand new cards from this mini expansion. So without further ado, let's hop into number five. Coming in at number five, we have the new Imprisoned Phoenix. This is a dual class card for Mage and Shaman. It's a two mana, two, three elemental that has dormant. When it wakes up in a couple turns, you get spell damage plus two. Now, this card is going to be a lot more powerful than you think because because when it wakes up on turn four or two turns later for after you play it, you have a full turn's worth of mana to just chuck as many spells at your opponent as possible. And this card does open up quite a few brand new archetypes, like in Shaman, like a Burn Shaman, maybe even like a Spell Damage Shaman, maybe even want to use it in the new Aggro Shaman that we've been seeing lately. And also in Mage, Mage is kind of dumpster right now, so this could help out quite a few different archetypes. You know, it could help out like Highlander Mage, maybe Spell Damage Mage, like Burn Mage, or even like Elemental Cyclone Mage too. Because this is an elemental, it does activate the elemental allies. And another cool combo you can do with this is that when you play it on turn three, it wakes up just in time for you to play Ross, which is yet another dual class mage and shaman card. Not to mention, this is just busted with cram session. So for two mana, you get to draw three cards when this wakes up. And most of the time with mage or even shaman, you're not really doing anything on turn two anyways. Maybe you're playing like a cage mesh custodian and shaman, or maybe you're playing like an astromancer solarian and mage. But for the most part, you're just like hero power anyways you might as well play this coming in at number four of the top five cards for the mini expansion is nitro boost poison so this is also another dual class card for rogue and warrior where you get to give a minion plus two attack and if it's corrupted you get to give your weapon plus two attack now this is only one mana so this is crazy easy to corrupt like anything for two mana corrupts this then you can push play us on three which oftentimes you're playing a weapon and warrior maybe in rogue you just want to like hero power and play this and then you get the attack on a stealth dude plus maybe you boost up your hero powers weapon so for just one mana this is incredibly versatile and it pushes a lot of damage it's pretty much four damage guaranteed right away and you might even be able to push even more if like the minion that you buff up sticks around or if you get like a couple of weapon swings on this as well but yeah just the fact that this is one mana just makes it pretty busted this might even be nerfed to two in the future it's just so insanely strong anything you play corrupts this and you just get guaranteed like four plus damage and coming in at number three is surprise surprise another rogue card this is going to be spark joy cheat and man does this card cheat so not only is it a three mana three three body but you get to play a secret from your hand for free and you get to draw a card so for three mana you're getting five mana out of it and you're drawing a card that's just insane. So this card by itself could seriously push Secret Rogue over the edge into a tier one archetype. I mean, Secret Rogue is already pretty good. It was just a little step behind like Combo Rogue or Miyoko Rogue, but now Secret Rogue could be the deck. And coming in at the second most powerful card of this set, we have Backfire. So this is a Warlock card for three mana. You get to draw three cards and you get to damage yourself by three. Now I said you get to damage yourself by three because oftentimes if you're playing like a zoo warlock that's a benefit because you can make use of that with like dark glare to regain a mana so all of a sudden this is a two mana draw three and it also has like flesh giant synergy and whatnot i mean synergy aside three mana draw three is just absolutely insane you might even want to run this card in like quest decks or even like a control deck you know three mana draw three is always good and it does refill your hand for like a dark skies oftentimes like on turn three you're just tapping as a control warlock anyways and that takes two damage so for one more damage you might as well draw two more cards right yeah honestly i think this card could even be balanced at like four mana so the fact that it's three mana is just absolutely crazy i could see this card being used for quite a long time now it does have to compete with other really strong forms of card draw in warlock too so we do have like the nation matron to discard like the hand of goldan type stuff but honestly, you might even want to run both. Like the both the card draw engines are so strong that you can just cycle through your deck like that. Now coming in at number one, the top card of this set is going to be a measly one mana one three neutral. And it is going to be armor vendor. Now I say measly, but it is anything but measly. So not only does this have premium stats, but being able to get four armor in any class right off the bat on turn one is crazy good. Now it does benefit both players but obviously if you're playing like a control deck or even like a mid-range deck you don't really care about your opponent's health or armor yet right you just want to survive
revive. And this helps you do exactly that. Like one of Warlock's biggest weaknesses is just dying to aggro decks and just not a whole lot of healing. So this kind of gives them that turn one and they really didn't have a good turn one before other than like Spirit Jailer. So you might as well just gain, you know, four health off the bats. If you top deck this card, like in the mid to late game, it's still getting four armor for you, which is always good in any kind of slower deck. Yeah, this card right here could be absolute meta defining to allow some of those slower decks to reach their late game potential. And who knows, maybe it even brings the old gods back into play as well. A couple of honorable mentions that were close to making the cut for the top five. We have the Imprisoned Celestial, the new Paladin Dormant Dude. It's a three mana four or five dormant. When it wakes up, it gives all your minions divine shield. This could be really strong if you play this on three, wait a couple turns, and then maybe even drop like an Alder Truth Seeker on five. So that way you get both of those dudes divine shielded up. And it's also like really important in like Pure Paladin too, because Pure Paladin really wants to get ahead on board and snowball and always make sure that they have a minion on board that sticks around so that it can buff it up with like a blessing of authority. And by giving all these things divine shield, it ensures that you're always ahead and that you always have a minion on the board to go ahead and buff up. Yeah, I could definitely see this guy being used in more than one archetype in Paladin. And then the second honorable mention is gonna be Illidari Studies, the new Demon Hunter Studies card. So this one allows you to discover an outcast card and the next one is one less in cost. Now what's really cool about this card is currently in standard, there are only 11 outcast cards and you get to discover it, which means you get three options. So chances are pretty good that you get to discover exactly what you want. Like imagine playing this on turn six, hoping to find like a skull of Gul'dan. It's pretty likely. And then when you discover it, the skull is automatically on the right side of your hand. So it's automatically outcasted. Or even if you're playing like an OTK demon hunter, you know, you can find like a spectral sight, even if you whiff on the skull of Gul'dan and that's still more card draw. I think it's like three or four of the outcasted cards in demon hunter right now, draw cards. So this is almost guaranteed to draw you a card or you can even just get a good outcasted card for later. Yeah, just the fact that you discover it and it automatically puts it on the right side of your hand so it's outcasted makes this card really, really good. And that's gonna be the top five cards for the Dark Moon Races mini expansion which again is going to be released on january 21st and this is my 100 correct prediction so if you disagree with me you're wrong i'm just kidding let me know down below in the comment sections of these five cards which ones you agree with or disagree with and also let me know which one of these five cards you're most looking forward to playing on thursday also if you're new to this channel i do make boatloads of off meta decks and I talk a lot about deck building. So if you like that kind of a thing, then hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification to make sure that you catch my next video. But I'll see you in the next one. Stay funky.